I'm gonna to talk to you today about writing a type safe event emitter. Or if you just end up using what you learn here to add type declarations to an existing event emitter, like the one that's built into Node, I still think there's value in that. But I'm gonna show you how to build a simple event emitter with TypeScript in such a way that it's strongly typed down to the event names and event parameters. Let's get started. So it might make sense to first look at how we would use an event emitter. And so the built-in event emitter from Node is pretty useful. It's just the types aren't really awesome. We would typically create some sort of an emitter. So we might say something like const user auth emitter equals new event emitter. And the thing is, this does not take any generics. So there's no generics that are coming into that, which means that there's no way for us to tell this event emitter what events we expect or what parameters or arguments each one of those events will have. So here, if I said something like user auth emitter dot on, and I listen for some event name, you can see it's just expecting a generic string. So I could say something like on login, and here I could add my parameters. And the thing is on login, we might actually get something like a user parameter, right? Like which user logged in, or maybe we get a user ID. The thing is though, there's no types for that. And there's no way for me to specify them. I mean, sure, I could add something here, now, of course, I'd have to create a user type. So here we've added a type for this specific function, but we haven't really added anything to the event emitter. So later, if I was to emit the events, if I were to emit the login event, first of all, there's no autocomplete. So it has no idea if login is a valid event name. And so it just knows that I have to pass some sort of string or symbol there. And then similarly, if I wanted to pass in an argument as I'm emitting the event, I could pass in anything I want, right? So I could pass in some number and it has no idea that number here is not a user. It'll just pass it right through. So the built-in event emitter, totally not type safe. So I'm gonna close this file for a second and we're gonna go over here I'll create a new file. We'll call this one event emitter.ts. Here, we're just gonna make a class. So I'll say export class event emitter. And so the reason I'm using a class is because it's a pretty common pattern to extend this class. Like it's pretty common in Node, to write something that extends or inherits from the base class event emitter. So let's start with adding some methods on it. And I won't implement the entire event emitter as it is in Node. We'll just implement on and I'll implement emit, which we'll use to show that it is type safe across both adding listeners and emitting events. So we need some private field to hold all of our event listeners. And so I'll make one here and you might be tempted to use a map but for this example, I'm gonna use an object and I think it'll be clear why I'm making this choice as we get further down the path of using types. So here we're gonna call it event listeners and we know this is gonna be some sort of an object in which the key is the name of the event and the value of each property is some set of listeners. So that could be an array or it could be a set. I'll say this is a record of string. So for right now, we'll just call it string and the value will be a set of function. Now we can do better. So for example, I never recommend using the word function here with a capital F in TypeScript, but let's roll with this for right now and just kind of see where this takes us. And then we're gonna implement on. And on here takes a key or an event name, and we'll say that's a string. And then it's going to take some sort of a handler, some sort of an event listener. So we'll call that listener, and we'll say that is a function. Now we know we can do better than function, right? So it's not really type safe to use the word function in this way. So we're gonna tighten up the types here in a minute, but I just wanna illustrate why we need generics. So the next thing that we need here is we need something for emit. So here I'll say emit, and again, this will take an event name, which is a string, and then it'll take some kind of a payload. Now the thing is this payload, we don't really know what type it is. So I'm gonna say unknown for now. And now we've sort of scaffolded this thing out. The problem is we've got a bunch of not very type safe things here, right? So a listener, we can be more specific. So a listener is something that takes our payload, right? So the listener here is some sort of a function, it doesn't return anything. So we'll say it returns void, but it takes some sort of a payload. But again, the payload here we'll say is unknown because we don't know ahead of time what the payload is. And I'll add one other caveat, which is that event emitters, at least in real life, they don't take exactly one argument. They can take zero or more arguments. So what we'd end up having to do is say something like dot, 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 args. And then here I can say array of, we'll say unknown, because I don't know what these args will be, but there might be zero, right? In the sense like, that you could emit an event that doesn't have a payload. It doesn't have any data associated with it. 
So then we'd have to do the same up here. So again, dot, 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 args is some sort of an array of stuff, but we don't know what. And so now you're beginning to see why we need to know ahead of time certain information. We need to know what sort of event names are available on this event emitter. So that way we can replace the string here in these three places with some union of string literals. And then for each one of those events, we kind of need to know what are the uh, what are the arguments? What is expected? What parameters or what payload is expected to be sent through whenever an event by that name is omitted? So if we try to model that as some sort of a type, what we actually end up doing is having a map, right? So a map between name, like the event name, and some set of potential arguments or parameters that will be received. And so we need some sort of a generic that fits that description that I just said. So here I'm going to say event map. So we'll get this event map, but I want to constrain it. I want to say event map extends record of string to array of any. So here we're saying that the event map is some sort of an object in which it has these string keys that will represent the event name. And then it has some some description of the arguments or parameters that would be passed through whenever an event by that name is omitted. So now we can say, all right, let's be a little bit more specific about event name on the on handle here. So here, instead of seeing a string, this here is going to be a key of event map. Now, the problem with this is we now need to say, well, what are these args going to be here on the listener? Well, we, we need to know which key from this event map. So in order to do that, we actually need to put a generic here and say k extends key of event map. And then here I can say the event name is k. So whenever k is here, k will also be over here. So what are the args going to be for this listener? It's going to be event map at k. So those will be the args. And we'll do the same thing down here. We'll say k extends key of event map. And then here we'll say the event name is k, and then the args, instead of array of unknown, the args is event map at k. And the only last thing that we need to do to make this thing strongly typed here, and this goes back to why I chose an object for my event listeners instead of a map, instead of like a JavaScript map class, so because now I can go through here and I could specify specifically what the event listeners are allowed to be, right? So we know that the listener takes this shape, right? And we know that the keys of this event listeners object is going to be key of event map. So what I'll do here is I'm going to use a mapped type here. So here I'm going to say that this is an object in which for k in key of event map. So the key here will be a key of event map, and then the value will be a set of listeners. So here I'm going to say set of, and then we'll paste in our type here for a listener. So it'll be a set of these functions. And then the last thing I'll do is, because we've got a complaint here saying that, you know, I said it would have all these keys, but I haven't specified any in my initialization when I initialize an empty object here. So here, I'm just going to add the question mark to make it partial. And then the other thing I can do is I can factor out, since I've repeated this piece of information twice here, I could factor this out into a helper, and I could call it something like listener. I could say type listener, in which the payload is a T. Here, I can say the args is a T. The only catch is now I have to add this constraint and say T extends array of any. So here I have a listener, and so now I could simplify this. Instead of putting this whole thing here, I can just say uh, listener of event app at k. I can do the same down here. I can take this whole function and replace it with that helper. And there's a few other optimizations we could do, but this is loosely how you type an event emitter. All right, now this video isn't really about the implementation of an event emitter, but I'll jump in here really quickly and implement just these two methods here. So here I'll go through, I'll grab the set of listeners, and of course I'll initialize it to an empty set if it doesn't exist. 
then I will add my listener to that set. And then here, just in case it wasn't previously assigned, I will assign it. And then for emit, we'll do something similar. I'll grab the listeners here. And that's it. That's our slim down, super type safe event emitter. Now let's go back over here and see how we would use it. So here I'll say const user auth emitter equals new event emitter. And so here I'll just come down and press tab and it'll auto import that for me. So here we have a problem. So here you can see that it has, it has fallen back to or it has used the default constraint here of a string with uh, some payload of any. And so what we want to do is we want to specify our map. And so here I'm going to paste in what we had before. So we have this type called user, and then I'm going to make this type called event map, and you can call it anything you want. And so I'll specify here that we have a couple of different events. So the first event is a login, and we'll say that the login here takes just the one parameter, which is a user of type user. And you might notice that uh, this doesn't look maybe like a normal tuple or array because I've added this label thing to it here, which will, I think, be clear later why that's handy, but it's not required. You wouldn't need that. And then let's say we have a logout event, which doesn't have any parameters. So that's just an empty tuple here. And so now when I instantiate my event emitter here, I will add, I will specify that event map. And so now if I say user auth emitter dot on, you can see that I get a list of these suggestions. And if I say on the login, and then I make this function here, you can see that it suggests here user, and that's why we put the user there with a colon, and then it knows what type it is. So here I can say user, and then if I hover my cursor over user here, you can see that it is of type user, and that is known by the type system because I put this little bit of upfront effort in to describe the events that my event emitter is expecting before I instantiate it. And so then similarly, when I emit an event here, I can say user auth emitter dot emit. And so it again gives me these uh, set of suggestions based on what I specified. And so here you can see that it wants the next parameter to be of type user. So here I would have to specify a user object. And so it'd have to be something that has an ID. And if I don't specify a name here, you can see that it's telling me that I have this missing property called name. So I need that as well. So here I'll say name is now it's happy. Similarly, if I wanted to omit the logout event, you can see that uh, there is no there is no second parameter. So it knows that from the well-typed event emitter that we built. All right, that's all I have for this one. I wanted to show you how to build something that's really type safe. I see this done wrong across the industry all the time, but there is a correct way to make a well-typed sound event emitter. And this is one example of that. So I hope that helped. Hope you learned something. We'll see you in the next one.